In order to fully service the vanos for rattles and leaks, you need to remove the vanos, the exhaust cam and the inlet hub. If you only want to cure poor performance, you need to remove the vanos to replace the piston seals. The solenoid seals can be replaced in situ, but it would be very difficult to do so without damaging something. I hope that this video will help you to understand how to fully service your vanos. Please see my other videos to see how to remove the vanos, how to remove the inlet hub and how to remove the exhaust camshaft and exhaust hub. The numbers in the square bracket relate to the drawing number and item number on the website. First I'll overhaul the inlet side of the vanos. Remove the vanos filter and seal. Take out the six cover screws. Remove the cover. You will need a very thin blade to do this. Take off the gear nut. Withdraw the pinion assembly. You can click on the link to see detailed instructions about overhauling the pinion assembly. Dispose of the o-ring. Don't fit the new one yet. To overhaul the pinion, remove the gear locking ring, dispose of the first shim, replace the shim. The shims and the shim rings are only available from Baysan. Remove the bearing and the shaft. Remove the other bearing. Replace the last shim and the shim ring. Then reassemble the pinion. Remove the five flange screws. Remove the inlet flange. You will need a thin blade to do this. Dispose of the oil seal and the o-ring on the flange. Remove the shim. Push the valve and piston out from the rear. Reattach the pinion to the piston so the piston can be withdrawn from the valve. Withdraw the piston. Replace the o-ring on the valve. This o-ring is the same size as the one used on the rear flange and the exhaust cover. Take the piston off the pinion. Disassemble the piston, leaving the paper gasket inside the body if possible. Dispose of the old Teflon seal and o-ring. Fit the new o-ring. Stretch the new Teflon seal just enough to allow it to fit over the new o-ring. Click the link to see how to stretch the seal. Reassemble the piston and pinion and put it aside. Reassemble the rear flange and shim. This is to act as a stop when you push the valve into place. Failure to do this will cause the o-ring to be damaged by the holes in the vanos body. Start to engage the valve in the vanos body. Do not push it into the body yet. Push the valve into position by using gradual, even pressure from the front cover. It makes things easier if you remove the o-ring from the front cover before you do this. Take off the front cover, but not the rear flange. Compress the Teflon seal on the piston by inserting it into the valve in the wrong direction. It has to be done from this direction as there is a lead in on this side of the valve. After about a minute, remove the gear and piston assembly. Remove the piston from the gear and dismantle the piston. 
Ease the top of the piston into the valve, taking care not to push the valve any further into the Vanos body. Remove the rear cover and shim. Renew the o-ring and the seal on the rear cover. Place the shim over the piston body and ease the piston body through the seal in the rear cover. If the paper gasket has been removed, put it back in the piston body. If it is damaged, just discard it. Insert the piston body in the valve and make sure the piston top is fully engaged before securing the rear cover with the five screws. Replace the gear nut with a new nut and renew the oil seal on the gear shaft. Insert the shaft through the piston. It is a tight fit. Secure the shaft with the nut. I used a small drop of thread lock as well. Replace the o-ring on the front cover. Refit the front cover using the six screws. Replace the Vanos filter seal. You can replace the Vanos filter if you want to, but if the mesh is not damaged, just clean it before you refit. That is the inlet side of the Vanos overhauled. To overhaul the exhaust side of the Vanos, you must first remove the pinion. Remember that it has a left hand thread. Overhaul the pinion in the same way as you overhauled the inlet pinion. You can click on the link to see how. Remove the exhaust cover and the three screws. You will need a thin blade to do this. Remove the exhaust piston. Discard the large seals, both the o-ring and the teflon seal. Fit the new o-ring. Stretch the Teflon seal just enough to fit over the new o-ring. Click on the link to see how to stretch the seal. Discard the small seals. Fit the new o-ring and again stretch the Teflon seal just enough to fit over the new o-ring. Turn the piston round so that you can fit it into the valve the wrong way. Ease it into the valve no further than a centimetre. If you push it in too far, it may go into a recess in the valve and get damaged. Remove it after a minute. Compress the other seal. I used a homemade tool with a 13.5mm hole in it. Here's the tool in action. This is a seal that needs to be compressed prior to fitting into the exhaust valve. Here's a special tool that I used to compress the seal. It has a 13.5mm hole. Oil up the inside of the tool and the seal. Insert the piston and leave it there for one minute. Then remove it. Turn the piston back the right way and ease it into the valve. Ease it in until it is just flush with the top of the valve. Replace the exhaust cover o-ring. Refit the exhaust cover using the three screws. There's more to overhauling the solenoids than just replacing the seals. Click the link to see what else can be done. To replace the seals, first remove the inlet cover. Carefully remove the solenoids. Replace the o-rings. After carefully cleaning everything, refit the solenoids. And you push it in and you're not going in through this gap, you will snap off the circuit board. Replace the gasket. This gasket is only there to protect against ingress of dirt, so the condition of the gasket is not critical if gasket paste is used. Refit the inlet solenoid cover. The exhaust solenoids are overhauled in the same way as the inlet. Replace the o-rings. Replace the gasket if necessary. Refit the cover. 
Click the link to see how to clean the pump and how to correctly fit the stop disc. Remove the sewer clip and the stop disc. Replace the stop disc. Refit the stop disc and the sewer clip. Replace the three O-rings. The smallest O-ring can be easily confused with the one in the pressure relief valve. This one is a smaller diameter but has a larger cross section. The smallest O-ring is best fitted just before you fit the vanos to the engine. Refit the exhaust pinion. Don't forget that it has a left hand thread. Remove the pressure relief valve. Replace the O-rings. And finally, refit the pressure relief valve. This concludes overhauling the Vanos, but there are still the camshaft diaphragm springs to replace. With the Vanos fully overhauled, you now need to replace the diaphragm springs. Please use the pause button and read the next two slides before replacing the diaphragm springs and shims. If you replace the diaphragm springs with ones from an S62 engine, the spring is reversed in the hub. Replace the inlet springs and shims. Remove the sprocket from the exhaust camshaft and replace the exhaust springs and shims. You only need to loosely reassemble the exhaust sprocket hub and camshaft as the screws and back plate are not fitted until it is all back in the engine. That's the Vanos and hubs and camshaft ready to be refitted to the engine.